Welcome to the next part of this uh, video lecture series. I'm going to talk briefly about um, creating VM templates, host ratings, um, and uh, creating a VM from a template. Um, a template, of course, is a model, um, a framework, a blueprint, um, a mold, however you want to think about it. Uh, you take, um, so you could create um, the same VM over and over and over. Say, get, say you have um, virtual desktop infrastructure and you want to simulate a generic computer or a very specific computer with specific needs, specific use, um, a specific use case. Um, you can create a hardware profile. You can create a guest operating system profile. You create um, a virtual machine. You clone that. Um, because you, and you need to do this with a VM that you're going to sacrifice, um, because, or you could also do this with a virtual disk file or a V, like I said, a virtual disk file, a VM in the library. If it's, if you, if you're using a VM, it needs to be one that you can afford to destroy because in the process of creating this virtual machine template, you're going to take that VM and render it no longer a, 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 a non-functional VM image. Which you can then use that template as the pattern for all the VMs that you'll create of that kind later. Um, essentially, you're going to um, select your template, select your virtual disk, or an existing VM. Best solution, of course, is to clone that VM, um, particularly if it's a VM that you want to use a lot of. Um, or if you want to, have, if it's a VM that that that's, that was only created for the purpose of creating a template, then you can just destroy it. If it's a VM that you might want to run for whatever reason, or say you for, you you create your VM, you create your clone, you create create your template. If down the line you want to update that VM, make a new clone, you still have to have the VM. There is um, an activity in your book about how to create that. One of the things you'll do along the way, as you're selecting the host where you're going to deploy that virtual machine, um, the server is going to rate the target, as in, and essentially it's going to tell you uh, how well the VM will function on that host, if the VM will function on that host. Um, if it doesn't have enough memory, if it doesn't have enough um, hard drive resources or whatnot, it may literally refuse. Um, so it's going to look at those two things. You'll get a, a rating between uh, zero stars and five stars. If you get zero stars, there's a really good chance that you're going to see a big red X, um, or big red circle with a white X in the middle that says, no, don't even try this. Uh, that's actually, I've seen that happen. Um, and if that, if that is the case, then you, e you either need to deploy that, tar that, that device to a different host, or if this is, if the host you're trying to, deploy that image to is the one you intend to use, then you have to do some kind of upgrade. Either add a new hard drive, add more memory. If it's a virtual machine, add more memory that way, expand the hard drive, etc. Now, um, now, once you have your template, um, your hardware profile, sorry, your hardware profile, your guest OS profile, your, your, VM, temp, your VM that you can use for the template, uh, you um, once that template exists, then you can turn that template into a new VM at will. You go over into your library, you pick the template, you choose create VM, um, and there's these are the only way. This is the only way, for example, that VMM self-service portal user can deploy a virtual machine. They'll get options, uh, but they can't just make one from scratch. They, you have to build one for them that they can turn on for themselves. Um, this is kind of, once we start talking about VMM, self-service portal, and tenancy, and things like that, we're talking about cloud functionality, um, platform as a service, essentially, um, not, so, not software as a service, where everything is built and they just use the applications you, have, you, you provide to them. That's um, Google Apps. That, that's software as a service. In this case, um, you provide them with actually no that's like this is strike that this is actually infrastructure as a service platform as a service um is more d uh, designed for developers so they're building new applications in the cloud 
on the basis of your platform. This is what I'm not really talking about, sorry, is infrastructure as a service. Um, and it will allow you to, to spin up new VMs at will. But you always, you, you, with, a, with any public cloud, or even with a private cloud, you may still deal with, be dealing with multi-tenancy issues. That is, everybody gets their own little chunk of your cloud. Um, you give it to them, you sell it to them, you rent it to them, whatnot. Um, and then you, you give them the tools they need, the resources they need, and then they can build inside that cloud. But they can't build things you don't give them a model for. Um, they can't just spin up anything they want. Um, they may be, the, the for, first folks who set all this up may be able to decide, okay, what kind of templates do I need? I need some Windows Server 2016 systems, some, some standard, some data center, desktop edition, no desktop edition, server core, Hyper-V, whatnot. Um, but they can't just say, you know what, I want a whole bunch of Debian servers. If that's not what they agreed for, it's not. If that's not what they agreed to, if that's not what you set up for them, the templates simply won't exist, and they can't spin it up. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the jobs workspace, which is a very useful place uh, for watching everything that your system has been doing recently. Um, so you you really can manage it. You can you can notice ongoing or recurring issues and things like that. So I'll be right back.